I'm Guy and this is Guy Robot. Now I'm sorry it's been crazy long since my last video. It's been a bit hectic, everything's changed. I'm no longer moving to Costa Rica, we're now living in Scotland, I'm currently involved in an IT consultancy firm I've started up and I have my own office. So the last few months have been a little bit insane to say the least. And something that's been putting me off videos is worrying about kind of getting the camera set up and doing the lighting and getting everything else going. So I decided rather than worrying about everything, I'm going to go for a slightly more low budget video today just so I can get something online. So this is all being shot with my phone and a microphone set. I hope it's all right. I've got an interesting project I wanted to do though, so I thought I would share it. So this is my new rack that I'm building as part of my business no points for cable management at the moment. One of the boxes I have in here is what was my workstation. Last time you saw this, it was water-cooled with all RGB lights. Now I've turned it into a 4U server. So it has 28 cores, 100 gig of RAM, and about two terabytes of SSD. On top of that, and we can't see it just yet, is an Intel Nux Gold Canyon. Now, although I've got those two VM hosts, this is kind of where I'm getting to and is a very, very basic sketch I drew yesterday. So the idea is the big one is my VMH01 and I've got my VMH02 virtual machine host, which is the Skull Canyon. But I want to sort out storage for it. Now, at the moment, I've got individual drives in each of them. However, that's kind of limiting. It means that if one goes down, everything goes down. I haven't got any redundancy. And so I want to start moving towards using ZFS again, but not using iSCSI like I did before. I'm looking at using a distributed file system so I can have a proper SAN where everything's connected. First step though, is I need to be able to retire the Skull Canyon, which currently runs ESX. So I've run VMware ESXi for years as the main host for my virtual machines, but I've kind of got to the point where I just wanted to try something different. I've been using Linux as my home workstation for ages now, and I wanted to bring KVM that I've been using elsewhere as the main virtualization technology in my lab. I also just got more frustrated as they went away from the desktop UI for ESXi free and the rubbish web UI that kind of crashed all the time and I had to hit refresh. So I'm moving to uh, KVM, specifically just running on Ubuntu for now with Quemu. Just while I kind of play around with it and get used to it, part of that means I need to move all of the VMs from my ESXi host over to my Ubuntu host so that I can then re-image it. And disk space is at a premium, particularly as some of the disks I've got are for Ethereum hosts and they are 600 gigabytes in size, which doesn't sit easily on a lot of disks. That is what we're doing today. So the first step of this project is storage. Now, at the moment, the big Xeon host has got a couple of terabytes in there. It's got one NVMe drive and it's got two SATA SSDs. However, there's no redundancy. So I have 12 SSDs here. What we're going to do today is, in effect, put a ton of storage into the Intel host. And we've got two, well, three storage tiers, I guess, hence the three different types of drive. Once I'm happy that this is working, I'm going to buy the same set of drives again to create a second host and then have them work as a SAN just on two VM hosts. And then after that, I'm separately gonna move them into dedicated SAN hosts rather than sharing with the VM ones. One step at a time though. So everything's gonna be ZFS, but we're gonna have a number of different pools. So we have four 970 EVO Plus. This is for high IOPS NVMe drive. So this is gonna be stuff that I really need a lot of bandwidth for for the transaction. So it might be very high volume databases or probably Ethereum nodes because Ethereum is the most expensive thing in the universe to run. Then we have four one terabyte crucial SATA drives. So these are good price and pretty much as quick as I can get for SATA drives. They're like 600 mega second and they came in about hundred pound each. Whereas these ones came in at just over hundred pound each but are only half a terabyte each. So we're gonna have um, two terabytes in NVMe four terabytes in SATA, and then we've also got these WD greens that I think are discontinued, but are super cheap. So the idea for these, two of these are spare for now, is to have a mirrored pair for the boot drive. So with this, not only do I get extra storage, but I want redundancy. So these are gonna be in Z pools with one spare, and these are gonna be in a mirrored Z pool. So we're going with ZFS again on Ubuntu. So we're gonna go for ZFS on root, we're gonna go for four in a pool here, which will give us about one and a half terabytes of storage and about three terabytes of storage with that. Putting it all in there, I have a ton of PCIe lanes because it's a workstation board. So you might remember this from a previous build. This is a PCIe card that gives me an NVMe 
and a SATA. So with four sockets on 4X lanes, I can put in the NVMe side on one side, the SATA on the other, plug it in, here are some SATA cables and we should be good. So here is my beautifully cable managed server rack. You might notice that I have actually beautifully cable managed cables coming into the rack. They were done by someone else. And then this was me quickly trying to fix something with the knife. It was all actually done nicely before then. We have two servers in here. We have, this is an Intel Nook Skull Canyon. It's completely fanless, hence the giant case for what is a tiny machine. And that is what's currently running ESXi. And this down here, is my main host that was my workstation previously. So we're gonna take it out the rack and demount it. And the joys of rack mount servers. Now I always tell myself I like rack mount servers, but that's when they're installed. I hate moving them around. And I also hate buying cheapy cases that don't have rails, which means the whole thing is currently being held up by a power brick. Oh, also there's a giant hole in this case because to fit the SSI EV motherboard in there and air coolers, which I'll show you in a minute, meant I had to remove all the drive bays at the front. So the last time you saw this computer, it was covered in rainbows and bright lights and it was forming the centerpiece of my glowing office. However, it turns out that a water-cooled PC with 100 rainbow lights is probably not the most sensible thing to have in an office. And I decided to repurpose it. So rather than water, I swapped these air coolers, which are quite toasty having just been running for a few weeks. Um, they are obviously Noctua's. I also got some Noctua 80 mil fans to replace the default ones. And across here were a bunch of drive bays which got removed, which means I haven't yet put this on. However, I have some duct tape in the car so I can put some drive bays back in. Inside at the moment, we have a NVMe disk that's not actually used. That's got a Windows back of mine I need to transfer. A GPU that is there just because I need something out of it. Um, we've got a SATA NVMe here, and we've got another crucial SATA one here that's literally screwed down to the bottom of the case. Not exactly ideal. What we now need to do is put four more of these in. Somehow we are limited on slots because of that. Hmm, we'll figure that out. And then we need to get going. So we've hit the first snag and we haven't even done anything yet. The problem is the graphics card was blocking two slots. Now, I've got four for my NVMe and SATA drives, which is gonna be say one, two, three, four, which is good, because that leaves us one spare. Then we're gonna have a, an extra one for one of the boot SATAs, and we're gonna have a boot SATA on board. So that should be sufficient, right? The only problem is that when that's in there and it's got its heat sink on, We've only got three spare ports left to go, and that doesn't quite fit in there. No matter what we want to do, we're only gonna get three. So the choices here are I take the heatsink off this, which the last time I did that, I blew up a card. Let's not do that. Or we take the motherboard out of the case and run this just to get everything installed without a case. I don't want to do that. Or I use the onboard VGA. I haven't got any VGA monitors, but I have got this converter, which should turn VGA into HDMI. The only problem with this is I haven't actually got the original header from the motherboard because I binned it thinking, why on earth would I want a VGA header? And this VGA header, which I thought I might be able to steal from this card, is nine, not 15 pins. So I'm hoping that the VGA header I have in my router over there is gonna be sufficient. Good news. This is the motherboard pinout for the uh, Xeon system, and this is the pinout for the industrial motherboard I've got in the router, which looks like, thankfully, we are going to be able to steal it. Right, so for those of you interested in my router, no points for cable management here, I get that. This is my router. The only thing we're doing today is stealing this off the front of it so that we can use it temporarily as a VGA card in the other one. In fact, I don't even need it in the router. I should be able to just, yeah, just a serial console on that. Right, so this is the router. It is a PF Sense box. It's got four ethernet ports. It's got, I don't know, 16 gig of RAM and an SSD. Very exciting. I'll do a video about that if anybody is interested. Uh, it's about 200 quid, but it's definitely better than most things. The only thing I wish is that this was a more silent power supply, but maybe I can switch that out at some point. Right, time to remove this. So hopefully this is going to work like magic. We've got one blocked pin there. I've changed the jumper to enable it. Bang, job done. We've got a VGA card. Woohoo! Thumbs up. Right, 
next step that sorts messes to so for those of you who watched my last video on building rgb systems this is the pcie card i used it's by easy diy fab they're available on amazon for like 20 quid the reason i've gone for this is it actually lets me put the sata and the nvme both in one pcie port with the SATA being powered off the bus and then a separate cable running through it. Um, the RGB is, if I say, being disabled. I just find it a fairly neat way to do it. Now, what I would like to do is just have one 4X, or sorry, one four slot um, 16X PCIe card to put all of my NVMe drives to take the single slot. However, that either requires bifurcation on the PCIe slots, which I don't know if this board has got, I haven't really checked it. And even if it is, it's an 80 quid card, which is more than I paid for the four of these. Or if you haven't got bifurcation support, then you need to get a card with um, its own PCI-X bridge, which is gonna come in about 300 pounds for four. It does mean you can run four 4X NVMEs on a single 16X slot, but it costs a crazy amount. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put a 970 Evo in the NVMe one, and we're going to put a crucial one terabyte in the other slot. And then I just have to keep on lather, rinse, repeating. So I think the first step is going to be, looking at it, I need to move this screw hole up to here, which if memory serves, is an absolute pain in the butt. So I'm gonna to have to turn the camera off. Well, that was certainly a pain in the backside. And what I don't understand is why we have to have these stupid screw things on NVMe. Would it have been so difficult to put little clips at all the different height holes so that you could just clip it down rather than having to mess around with different proprietary screws for every single person? Anyway, so I've got my a SATA one, and I've also got my NVMe one. So before I wire everything up, I am going to actually do a test run with a single cable. We click it in there, and then hopefully if I just put the board into any old PCIe slot, it needs to be 4X for this. Okay, and for now I've plugged it in there, so it turns out that the right angle connector doesn't work on that end or anywhere sensibly on my motherboard, so that's annoying. Anyway, rather than being frustrated by that, let's test if this works and power up this server. Success, so we've also got the crucial drive showing up there as well. I did have to switch uh, the cable I was using for some bizarre reason and go to the other one. Can't see why, but that now works. So all I have to do now is put some thermal pads on there and repeat this across all. So we've got the rest of the cards made up now. We've got three of them that are just the same as that first one we tested. So we've got the Crucial SATA and the 970 EVO Plus. And then we've got another one that I had sitting around that's just got one of the WD greens in for a boot device. And the other boot device I've got is gonna go straight into the motherboard where we've got that Crucial one at the moment. I'm actually slightly excited about how much NVMe storage I've got here. I mean, that's what, or what, M2 storage, two, four, six, eight, nine drives, plus we've got another one to go in as well. I remember when I got my first one only three years ago, it was on this channel when I put my first drive in, and I was amazed how far tech had come. And now here we are with terabytes of the stuff. It's awesome. And here we go, it's the big moment of truth, we turn everything on. We had one slight problem in that I ran out of right-angled connectors, so I can't actually use that space between them as it sticks out too far. And unfortunately uses weird right-angled connectors that are the wrong way to every sort of right-angled cable I have. That's what happens when you throw cables out that you should have probably kept. Lesson learned for me. Anyway, let's see whether these drives are all here. So there we have it, four NVMe and one, two, three, four, five, six. SATA devices, the two 120s and the one terabytes. So next step is for us to actually install something on this. Well, we've got the machine set up and running, but I'm not gonna do the whole video with setting up Ubuntu, with ZFS on route and everything else today, because I think that's gonna go on for a little bit too long. So I'm gonna draw this video to a close now, and I'm gonna do a separate video following this one where I run through setting up Ubuntu 1904 with ZFS on route. And after that, we'll get all of this configured and get all the VMs moved over. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's been different than my normal ones with it just being shot on my camera. I hope the sound's all right and everything. But I just wanted to get a video out there because it's been so long since I gave you guys a video and this is quite an interesting project that I'm working on at the moment. I am active on Twitter, so you can look me up there at GuyRobotTV and otherwise you can check the next video which should be on this channel soon once I've got the next part of it done. So don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Thanks.